Did y'all shake your head? Mm -hmm. Should I be asking about the shortcut yet? No. What's the first thing you should be doing? Subtract 11. How we will subtract 11 right after that? Good, that's fantastic. You need to be doing that. So subtracting 11. Greater than or equal to how much? Negative 2. Oh, well. That's weird. What do we have here? I want you to think about it for a second. I want you to think about it for a second. Um, think about it for a second. What's absolute value do? Two positive. Makes it positive. No matter what, it makes it positive, right? No matter what. No matter what, it makes it number positive. Is a positive number ever bigger than a negative number? Yes. yes. Is a positive number always <clears throat> bigger than a negative number? Yes. yes. You agree that's a positive number? Yes. yes. That's bigger than a negative number, right? Mm -hmm. Always. Always bigger than a negative number. This is all solutions. This is infinite solutions. Negative infinity to infinity. This is one of those ones where your or would cross over, right? You can't, you can't solve this. It doesn't make sense to actually write out the, the inequality. Uh, but if you have a positive greater than a negative, that's true all the time. No matter what you plug in, try any number. Okay, give me, give me. It's just some crazy number. One. One's a crazy number. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. How about negative negative fifty three? Add one to negative fifty three. What do you get? Negative fifty two. Take the absolute value of negative fifty two. What do you get? Do you see how when you take the absolute value, you become positive? Is that greater than negative two? All the time, no matter what you plug in, and that's what this says. No matter what I plug in, that's always true. Okay, now we can try this one, all right? Let's all work on this one together. What's the first thing we do on this problem? Sorry, I kind of threw a curveball at you on that one. You're like, wait a second, Leonard, this is too easy, no solution. Well, actually, it's all solutions. How about this one? What do we do here? Good. Let's all work on this together. To participate up here, we get the absolute value of 4x plus 3 is greater than 5. Y'all need to isolate the absolute value first. That's the first thing you do in every single one of these problems in section 9.2 or 9.3. Now, is my shortcut going to work here? Y'all need to, you need to know that. Is it going to work or not? No. No. It works if it's this way. It does not work if it's this way. The first inequality that we're going to write is 4x plus 3 greater than 5. Without changing anything, uh, someone on the right-hand side of the room, tell me my second inequality. What do I write out? Is what now? Wait, is it going to be greater than or less than? I'm hearing both people. I'm hearing people say... Uh, less than. We have to switch that around. We have to switch it. You change the sign, you flip the inequality. Folks, on an or in, on on this type of inequality, look at your your symbols here. They will be facing different ways. Okay, they're gonna be facing the wrong ways, well, the, the correct ways, but different ways, not the same way. Subtract three. We get four x is greater than two. Divide by four. Don't change anything around. Greater than one half. Subtract three. Four x is less than negative eight. Divide by 4, x is less than negative 2. Can you graph this on a number line? Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Let's do that together. Where does it start? Yeah. Yeah. Notice if you do this in the correct order, it's already, already there for you. Negative 2, 1 half. Yeah. Let's do this one first. Uh, folks, should we go up and to the left or up to the right up here? To the left. And on this one, do we go up and to the left and up and to the right? Which one? Right. Can you graph this with an interval notation? Or do interval notation with that? Yep. I know parentheses go around my infinities. Am I going to be using parentheses or brackets for my negative 2 and my 1 half? It's as good as we can do. On a show of hands, somebody will be okay with that example. Yeah, good. How about this one? What are you going to do first? Add 
If we add 5, we get x minus 2 minus 3 greater than 3. What now? Two inequalities. First one we do without changing anything. Second one we do by changing the sign and the inequality. It's this part right there. That's the important part. I just want to make sure you don't be stuck on these fractions again. Some people have kind of made some mistakes in their homework with this stuff. When you're doing this, try adding the 3 first, okay? And get x over 2, in this case is less than 0, x over 2 is greater than 6. Now multiply by 2. That way you don't make any mistakes on that. If we do, we get x is less than 0, we get x is greater than 12. With our, I'm not going to do the number line, well, I guess I will. Here's 0, 12. <laughs> it's so easy, it's, it's so fast, it doesn't really matter. Negative infinity to 0, we use some parentheses there because we don't have any equal sign. Union, 12 to infinity. And that's our answer. Hey, do you guys feel okay about this inequality stuff, the absolute value inequalities? We know essentially we're making two equations with our and. With the ones facing this way, we make the compound inequality, we do it in one step. With the or, the ones facing this way, the ones that are going to go like this, we make two inequalities using the steps that we've just talked about, not changing anything, changing both the inequality and the sign, solving both, put everything in interval notation when you finish.